What I have is a pineapple, but what I really want is pineapple vinegar. And watch out, there will be ranting. Hey everyone, today we are making pineapple vinegar. Um, something that uh, isn't easily found here where we live, but uh, I really need it all the time to make crotito, and you can find the crotito recipe elsewhere on our channel. And uh, so it's really simple. I mean, you start with a pineapple. Actually, you start with a chunk of this, and this is uh, known by a bunch of different names, um, depending on where it's from and, uh, and where you buy it, but it is essentially unrefined cane sugar. And uh, I'm just gonna throw that in the blend tech. So, pineapple vinegar. Um, the process of making vinegar is fairly simple. Uh, it's a multi-step process. First, you need yeast in an anaerobic environment to create alcohol. And then you put it in an aerobic environment and a different type of uh, microbe creates acetic acid. And that's the acetobacter. And there's, I mean, there's several different yeasts and there's several, several different bacteria that do this job. So as you can see, I'm not really trying to peel this um, and make it look nice. I just want to get the peel off, and then I'm just going to chop this up and stick all of this into the blender to, uh, to give a nice puree. Okay. So that gives us four cups of pineapple puree. Put that into this big mason jar. And to that, you want to add about half as much, again, water. Um, I'm using distilled water. Uh, you can use distilled water or filtered water or spring water. You just don't want to use North American tap water because it has been, uh, it's undergone a process to make sure that it kills all the microbes. And you know, you don't want to kill all the microbes in this situation because the microbes are what we really want. So, uh, Let's give that a bit of a swirl, get it all. In it goes. If you've been watching our brewing channel, you know that, uh, that we've been brewing beer. So this is just beer yeast. And you could use beer yeast, wine yeast, champagne yeast. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit in. Uh, about a tablespoon. and then give that a bit of a stir. And this is where I'm going to be different than everyone else. Um, at this point, every other tutorial tells you to pour in a little bit of raw vinegar or vinegar mother into this container and then cover it with a piece of cheesecloth. Stick it over there on the counter and leave it for four or five weeks, five weeks, six weeks, whatever until you get vinegar. And you will get vinegar. For sure you'll get vinegar. But, like I said earlier, this is a, a multi-step process. So first we need to turn this into alcohol, which is an anaerobic process. So, just like making beer or wine, we put a cap on with an airlock. The yeast will start uh, creating alcohol and CO2. The CO2 will drive all of the oxygen out through this airlock, one-way valve, and it will bubble for probably four or five days until we've created alcohol. And that's the process we're going to go through next. And then for all of you sort of, you know, Doubting Thomases out there who are saying, but I do it the other way and I get great vinegar. Um, yeah, you probably do get vinegar. Is it great? I don't know. Could it be better? Yeah, definitely could be. So this is U.S. Department of Agriculture Farmer's Bulletin number 1424. Um, published in 1924, and it's called The Making of Vinegar in the Home and on the Farm. And if we uh, go to page 21, causes of failure. The chief causes of failure in making vinegar are, one, the use of material having too low of sugar content. We've got a smallish pineapple, weighed about a kilogram, and uh, about 150 grams of, uh, of raw sugar. So we've got plenty of sugar in this container. Number two, 
failure to recognize the fact that the making of vinegar involves two distinct fermentations, alcoholic and acetic, and that the first must be completed before the second begins, which means you really have to do this as a two-step process if you want to make fantastic tasting vinegar. Um, and if you're making it at home because you want to make great vinegar, then why not take the time to do it properly? Uh, if I wanted crap, I'd go to the grocery store and buy it. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. I'll put a little bit of water in this. We'll come back to it in a couple of days. I'll show you how much it's bubbling. And then a week from now, we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next step. So here we are, five or six days later. The yeast have consumed all of the sugar that they're going to. There's no activity in the airlock, which means they're finished their job. Uh, I suspect, based on knowing what I know from brewing beer, that we have probably five to seven percent alcohol uh, by volume here. And this next step could be done completely in this mason jar. Ah, it smells really good. But I'm going to strain out the solids, personal preference, you don't have to, into another container. And so essentially what we have here is pineapple wine. And since uh, the word vinegar comes from the French for sour wine, uh, we are now just going to sour the wine. And so what's left here is uh, pineapple pulp and yeast. And I just, uh, we don't need that. I'm just gonna get rid of that. And what we have here smells fantastic. Uh, clean spoon, give it a taste. Yeah. Pineapple wine. Tastes pretty good. So, if you already make vinegar, then why are you watching this video? But if you're already making vinegar, you just take a little bit of the mother that you already have and you put it in here. And the next step is uh, in the presence of oxygen. If you don't have vinegar mother, you can just uh, put a piece of cheesecloth over it, leave it on the counter, and you know what? The acetobacter or the bacteria that we really want in here is everywhere. Uh, and it will naturally sort of gravitate, take over and start converting the alcohol to acetic acid, um, which works takes a little bit longer and you don't know which acetobacter is going to take hold and sometimes the ones that take hold aren't as uh, tasty as you might like. So I have unpasteurized, unfiltered cider vinegar. It has the mother in it so it has the acetobacter that we're looking for and I'm just going to inoculate this. So uh, a couple tablespoons will get the whole process going and uh, we'll put some cheesecloth over it because you don't want any flies or fruit flies or other insects getting into it. Plastic band, and that will sit on our counter for another five or six days and we'll give it a taste and see how it is. And so, um, best laid plants, about eight weeks have gone by. This is definitely vinegar, you can really smell it. Um, Couple of notes, uh, the cheesecloth I used, holes were big enough that some fruit flies still managed to get inside. Uh, you can see them in there. And this isn't very much vinegar, not much at all. So the growth of the mother on top isn't very thick. And I don't make vinegar often enough that I'm too worried about saving it from one time to the next. Like I don't, I know a lot of people make vinegar and when they get to this point, they've already got the next batch ready to go and they just transfer the mother over. And they get this really nice thick mat of, of, of the mother. It's sort of a rubbery, almost a latex type feeling. Um, and they just move it from one jug to the next. And that's great. If you use that much vinegar, that's what you're gonna end up doing. And so you're gonna save this mother and put it into the next batch immediately. And you will eventually grow something that is fantastic. Um, I'm going to use a fine mesh coffee strainer because I don't want the lumps of mother in the jar. There will still be a lot of live bacteria that transfers over because the bacteria obviously is smaller than the mesh on this coffee filter. 
So um, here we go. Oh, you can see the mother drop out there. And there's sediment on the bottom. I'm going to leave that behind. I don't really want that. So this is the mother. Um, not sure if you can see it. Wait, let me. So that's the mother, um, and if you were going from batch to batch, you would just take that. Um, yeah, a little bit slimy, but you know, you could just pick that up and drop it into your next batch. Let's give this a taste. Tasting spoon. Oh yeah, that's good. We're gonna make some really good curtido with this. Mm. I would, um, strong. I would highly recommend that everyone try this at home at least once and see how it works out. There's something about um, making stuff in your own kitchen that is just amazing. Oops. Making a mess. So there you have it. Thanks for stopping by. Um, hope to see you again soon.